everyone, and welcome to today's Books Alive online event with Tom E. Moffat and Miss Blake from Rickerton High School Library. Uh, we are so thankful to the New Zealand Librarian Partnership Program and the New Zealand Book Awards for Children and Young Adults for the opportunity to host this event series this week and next week. Uh, today, Tom is going to be taking us through the art of joke telling. His book, You're Joking, Become an Expert Joke Teller, is a finalist in the Elsie Locke Nonfiction Award category for this year's New Zealand Book Awards for children and young adults. So I will leave it with Tom uh, to tell us some jokes. Kia ora, can you hear me? Okay, awesome. Um, I'm Tommy Moffitt and um, I write adventure comedies and jokes for kids. Now, um, my first book, Barking Mad, this won the 2015 Tom Fitzgibbon Award as well as a notable book award. And I'm very lucky to say, I'm grateful to say that the, my most recent book, your um, is actually a finalist in this year's NZCYA. So I get to fly down to Wellington uh, in a couple of weeks to for the award ceremony, which is going to be very, very exciting. Now, I'm just going to share my screen with you. Um, you can see this. Because today I'm actually going to give you kind of uh, going to distill this down a little bit into a quick session that I'm going to call Joke Telling 101. Now, um, I, so before we start though, can I see a show of hands if you like jokes and joke telling? Me for starters. Good, there's a few. Oh, good. Now, hands down, can I see a show of hands if you think that you're not very good at joke telling? Now, I have written, I've written about 1,500 jokes now, or coming come close to. And whenever I tell people that, quite often the response I get is, oh, man, I'm really bad at telling jokes. And the thing is, I actually used to be quite bad at telling jokes. It was, it's not something I was naturally born with, but I developed the skill. Um, I think I developed it when I was backpacking because I'm tra you're traveling around and you meet different people every day and you get to practice exactly the same jokes on different people. And that's where I kind of honed my skills and worked out what makes good joke telling or makes a joke better. So today I'm actually going to, um, yeah, go through a few of the tips that I've learned and that are included in this book. But before we do so, let's have a look at a few of the different types of jokes. Now, um, these are the kind of jokes that you might find in a joke book. And the first is one-liners. Now, a one-liner is it's a short joke that's essentially just a statement that's either a sentence or two. And the setup is the first part of the, set, the statement. And then the final part, the end of the statement is your punchline. I'll give you a couple of examples in a minute. And question and answer jokes. These are the ones that you'll find in all the joke books that you pick up. And they have the setup is a, is a question and the, um, the punchline is the answer to the question. You also get longer jokes. Now, these um, are really... <laughs> you there, Sally? We okay? Yep. And, we, and a longer joke is... Um, <laughs> Is like a storytelling that gives you a, like the whole setup of the story with a short punchline at the end. Can you hear me okay, Miss Blake? And finally, we've Miss Blake, can you hear me? And so, and finally, we've got joke cycles. Now, joke cycles. Are we okay, Sally? Jake, are we okay? Just getting it going again. For some reason, it's frozen. 
All right. Where did we freeze? <laughs> you there, Jackie? Uh, yeah, so, um, I'm fine. It might be their Wi Fi in the internet or in the library. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Where should I go back to? <laughs> Okay, we're away again. Ooh, so where did I get to, Sally? You've just got question and answer. Question and answer, jokes. Okay. All right. Hello. Welcome back. Um, sorry about that. Let's. Um, I'm going to push through the different types of jokes again. So question and answer is where the setup is the question and the punchline is the answer to the question. Oh, wrong way. And... Um, <laughs> longer jokes. Um, now, a longer joke is... <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going to just mute them, Tom, and then you can go through your slideshow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now he's still talking. Hello. Hello, are you there? Can you hear us? I don't know if they can hear us, though, Jackie. I don't know either. He's not frozen. He's talking. Hello. Hello. Testing, testing. Testing, testing. Can you hear me? Testing, testing. They might be trying to connect to their um, internet better. Oh, yeah, maybe plug in. Yeah, they might just need to plug in. Sorry, everyone in the audience. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Testing, can you hear me? Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me, Sally. Let me know if you can hear me. Hello, hello, testing. Testing. Okay, should I try? Okay, right, let's try and click on because I'm gonna get into the joke shortly. Now, um, joke cycles, are like not not jokes or doctor doctor jokes, and these are kind of um, themed jokes or jokes that follow a particular pattern. Um, and you find lots of these in joke books, such as like "Why did the chicken cross the road?" Uh, type of cycles. So I'm going to give you a couple of um, examples. So we'll start off with some one-liners. Um, first one: Statistically speaking, six out of seven dwarfs are not happy. <laughs> And I'm going to give you um, some, I'll show you my illustration <laughs> as we go. Next, next uh, one liner. The person who invented knock knock jokes deserves a Nobel Prize. <laughs> okay, question and answer jokes. Uh, why did the employee put a clock under her chair? Here's a picture. She was working overtime. <laughs> uh, what did what will a cow do if you clean its feet give you a pat on the head oh. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go with a longer one um oh yeah so the other day there was this amazing thunderstorm with crashing lightning a booming thunder and howling wind my my little brother looked through the window for hours until I thought, maybe I should let him inside. <laughs> <laughs> and here are some joke cycles. We've got like a knock knock joke. Um, I'll do both voices just for ease. So knock knock, who's there? Waiter, waiter who? 
wait a minute, I think I'm at the wrong house. <laughs> or what is one of my favorites? These are funny book titles, Urine Sample by Phil A. Beaker. <laughs> <laughs> or you've got um, another book title would be um, I've Wet Myself by Dan Pundies. <laughs> and Dr. Dr. Jokes are one of my favorite. We've got um, Dr. Dr. I feel like I'm under a microscope. Let me take a closer look at you. <laughs> so um, I'm going to go through a few joke telling tips. Now. And the first thing that I think is really important when you're telling jokes is to know the joke. Now, when someone thinks that when someone does a bad job at joke telling, it's usually because they're just trying to remember one that they heard the other day. They've never actually kind of run through it before they don't know it and they're trying to figure it out as they tell it so it's really important that if you're going to tell a joke certainly to a sort of large audience or like um even a few people that you know the joke beforehand and it's much better to have memorized it than to be reading it from a book because you, it's difficult to deliver a joke well when you're reading it now the next thing is also to know your audience jokes are like underpants they're not one size fits all you have to actually have to target the particular audience with the right joke. So the jokes that you would tell your um, teacher or your grandmother are quite different to the jokes that you're going to tell your friends. So you need to think about who you're telling the joke to um, and try and target it correctly. We've also um, got to choose the right place and time because it doesn't matter how good a joke is. If you tell it at the wrong time, you're not going to get a laugh. Um, and you could even offend someone. So it's uh, some of the best times for telling jokes are when there's not much else happening. So you might be queuing for a bus or waiting between lessons. And they're your sort of fertile joke telling times. And finally, it's your delivery. If you can practice your delivery, then you can tell your jokes better. And you could do this in front of a mirror or like, a, or you could just practice it with a friend or family member before you go and tell other people. And this is a bit like when I was backpacking, I would practice them every day on different people and I really honed those particular jokes and I'll never forget any of them. They're ingrained in here. So, um, well, a few specific delivery tips. Things like maintaining eye contact is really important. So that's why you don't really want to read it because you want to be looking at the person or people. If you're telling to one person, you should look directly in their eye. If you're telling a joke to multiple people, you should look between the people as you move through the joke. And also, um, vary your voice. You can use <laughs> sound effects and silly voices as you go through the joke because it helps to bring it to life. And also, um, actions and gestures help as well. It really kind of makes the joke more engaging and funnier before you even get to the punchline. And keep that smile on your dial. Like eye contact helps you look confident in your joke. And so does smiling. If you're smiling as you tell it, people kind of think you're kind of happy with your joke. Try not to laugh hysterically because there's nothing that kills a joke quicker than only the joke teller laughing. But do just look happy and confident in your joke. And focus on rhythm and timing. Like you can really fight on a shorter joke. You can fall into the rhythm of the joke. Like, um, why did the chicken leg cross the road to get to the other side salad? You just fit into that rhythm. And if it's, and also when between the um, setup and the punchline, you want to try and have a gap because that helps to build anticipation and kind of gives that punchline extra punch. And finally, make sure your flies are done up and you've cleaned your face and wiped your nose because you want people to be laughing for the, right reasons when you're telling a joke. So I'd like to do a little activity. So Miss Blake's going to help me set this up. But what we're going to do is on our devices, we're going to visit my website. And my website has got, if you go to tommymoffitt.com forward slash jokes, there are uh, 40 or 50 categories that you can choose from. And within, the, and there's jokes in each of those categories. So if you have a start sifting through and um have a look for jokes that you like, that you think are funny and you think perhaps your classmates would like. And after about 10 minutes of searching, we're going to get back together and we're going to share some jokes. 
if you um, are a confident joke teller and you'd like an additional challenge, down the bottom of the screen, you can see it says, um, go to tommymoffitt.com forward slash longer jokes. Now, this is a URL that I've set up specifically for today, and that's got some of my longer jokes in that really enable you to kind of practice some of these joke telling skills if you want to give yourself a challenge. And also um, in the speech that bubble, if you know any jokes, I'm sure you know lots of great jokes and I would love to hear them. So within this 10 minutes, while we are um, looking at the website for jokes, if you just want to come up one at a time or two at a time and just Tell me your jokes. I'd love to hear any great jokes that you've got. So um, we'll leave this screen up. And if Miss Blake, if you can um, organize them to get their devices out and start having a sift. Okay. So have you guys got your phones? Yeah. Sorry, I just use phones. Here's the website there. Can you have a look at it? So if you don't want a joke, and when you, or if you've already got a joke, you can actually tell us the joke you've already got. <laughs> and find us a joke. Come up and tell me one if you've got, got one already that you know. Miss Blake, do you know any? Uh, oh, gosh. <laughs> on the spot. On the spot, yeah. I can't think of any off the top of my head. I have to think of one. Are we going to anybody's chance to appear on the website? Tom, are you going to have to tell us another joke while we're, while we're doing this? Okay. Oh, are you, are you looking at the moment? You're just looking, are you? We're looking up their website. Yeah. Okay. Well, I've got a handy um, joke book next to me, so I can just. <laughs> it's funny, I've written 1,500 jokes, and every time someone says, Tell me a joke, I just go, just like blank. <laughs> and, but if you say, tell me a dog joke or a bum joke or something, I'm totally fine. A dog joke. <clears throat> a dog joke? Um, what does sheep dog say? What does sheep dog say? Bark. <laughs> <laughs> or um, why did the dog sniff the computer? <laughs> to see if its email had sent. Yeah, I'm as now the teacher's got one. I think if you talk to him there, maybe Yeah, come All right, I've got one. Are you ready? <laughs> Why does an oyster make a terrible pet? Because it's an oyster. It's selfish. <laughs> <laughs> you have to click button. I'm trying. Have you got the Thank <laughs> you. 
Lots of, lots of people finding jokes. Lots of people finding jokes, but they're a little uh, not so keen to come up and share oh, their jokes. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> what about coming up individually? No? Just to me. Why don't you just go and tell Tom and screen over there? What's Come and tell Tom that joke. It's a good one. Here we are. We've got one, Tom. Yeah, Come and tell Tom that joke. What do you call a magic owl? Say again. What do you call a magic owl? I don't know. Houdini. <laughs> That's good. Nelly, did you want me to tell a couple? Tell some more, Tom. Yes, please. Okay, I'll do a couple of longer ones then. Okay, go. So, um, I was driving down the road the other day and this cat ran straight out in front of my car. Boom. I went straight over it. I went, I rushed out the car, went back to look and the poor thing was dead. And I looked on the collar and there was an address just a few doors up. So I went carefully up to the doorbell and I rang the doorbell and this lady answered in her dressing gown and said, look, I'm really sorry. I think I've just killed your cat. And she said, why? What did it look like? And I did this. <laughs> she said, no, what did it look like before you hit it? So I did this. Okay, shall I do another one? And then I'll, um, okay. So I was lying in bed the other night when the doorbell rang. And I got out of bed, opened the door, and there was this eight-foot-tall cockroach standing there. I looked up at it, and it just jumped on me and started hitting me and biting me. Um, and all I could do was just close the door on it and crawl up to bed. A few hours later, um, the doorbell goes again. And without even thinking, I stagger downstairs, open the door, and there's the cockroach again. Jumps on me, kicks me, bites me. And this time, I don't even close the door. It just scurries off. And I wake up in the morning, and I'm in so much pain that I think I've got to go to the doctor. So I go to the doctor, and there's this massive queue in the doctor's surgery. But the doctor comes out, and he sees me standing at the back of the queue and says, you, come into my office. So I walk past the queue into his office, and the doctor says, let me guess, you were lying in bed and the doorbell rings and there was a massive cockroach at the door. I said, doctor, how on earth do you know that? And he said, there's a nasty bug going round. <laughs> 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 So, Sally, do you want to bring it back and I'll do a bit of a wrap-up? Yeah, 
Can I, yep, absolutely. Okay, guys, you pop your phones back away here. Thank you. Come up here, girls. Get back up. Thank you, team. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah, so um, thanks, guys. Thanks for um, having a go at that. And basically what I'm trying to say in this book is that joke telling is a skill that can be learned. It's something that you just need to practice and kind of with a bit of a focused practice because you wouldn't be expected to go out and play a football match without doing practice beforehand. And I'm trying to encourage people to do the same thing with joke telling and also to sort of enjoy joke telling and, and treat it as a sort of a serious hobby, so to speak. Now, um, here are the books that I've written and the top section shows my fiction books, but underneath are all my um, joke related books. And so I actually would produce this book here and this is called the Joke Collector's Notebook. And what it does is it's basically a journal where you can jot down your own jokes in the journal. And it's complete with tips um, and, th and challenges throughout the book. But essentially, it's for you to create your own favorite joke book. And that's kind of me. I want joke telling to become a hobby that people can enjoy. So I've got my um, first joke book here. This is um, I'm Joking. And my next joke book actually comes out next month. You can see it in the picture here. It's called I'm Seriously Joking. Um, and so that's another 500 original jokes. And then later in the year, I'm going to release a book called You're Joking, Create Your Own Knock Knock Jokes. And that's kind of taught guiding you through how to write your own knock knock jokes um, with obviously lots of examples thrown in. So, I mean, that's kind of all for me. I just wondered if anyone's got any questions they would like to ask me about joke telling or writing or anything in particular. Any questions? How did, I've got one. How did you get into it? How did you get it? Were you always telling jokes? Um, I, no, I actually, I did tell my, write my first joke when I was about six years old, um, which I can tell you, but you've got to promise not to laugh. Um, it's, why, what, de how do birds fry, de how do birds cook their eggs in a flying pan? So that was when I was six. Hope, I think, I like to think my sense of humor is immature with age. And um, I actually got into writing jokes when I w had my website. But if you have a website, no one visits it unless you have um, searchable content. So you kind of need to put some content on there that people are looking for. And I, first of all, I thought I'd just upload jokes that I know because I knew quite a few jokes. But when I wrote them down, I had about seven, I had 17 jokes, which is not enough for a regular blog post. So I just thought, and also then you've got the copyright issue of what do you do? Um, yeah, it's not, they're not my jokes. So I thought, okay, I'll just start writing my own jokes. So I started writing 10 jokes a month. And then within a year, I had 120 jokes and, yeah, just kept feeding it. And also, they've been become pretty popular on my website. My most popular category is the bum jokes. And I get about, did you know there's about 2,000 people out there in the world who type bum jokes into Google every month? And mine's the top search result. Yeah. My mum's so proud. <laughs> um, any other questions? Any other questions? Oh, they're a quiet bunch this afternoon. <laughs> Does he have a book? Okay, I've got a question. Do you have a favourite joke that you've written? Oh, um, do I have a favourite joke? It's a bit like the question, tell me a joke, that always just goes a bit blank. Let me think. Um, I quite like one of my first ones that I came up with when I'm getting serious about it, which was, um, why did the dog breathe into the washing machine? It was trying to clean its pants. <laughs> one of my early ones. Yeah, that's good. 
<laughs> Any more questions? No, I don't think so. Cool. Well, thank you very much for listening. And um, yeah, I really appreciate your time and I hope you've got some jokes that you can go and share with your family and uh, friends after this session. So thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.